All right, we're live. Uh, somebody please mute, everybody mute your mics, please. Some feedback. Please mute your mics. Somebody's mic's giving some feedback. Please mute your mics. Okay. Welcome to the first OnLive Fans Roundtable Discussion. I am your host, Ed Krasenstein, and today we have many guests from the OnLive Fans community on hand to take part. The point of this event is to get some of our community members involved in discussing different topics related to OnLive. This is not meant as a news broadcast or anything that will take the place of our weekly podcast. So let me explain how this will work. I will propose a question or a discussion topic. And then we will go around the room to get the opinion of our guest. Each topic will start off as a closed topic, meaning that there will be no interruptions from other roundtable members. In fact, we're going to ask you to mute your mics when you're not talking. When it is someone else's turn to speak, you will be muting your mics. Once we have gone around the table and heard the opinions from each member, I will open the table up and allow for an open discussion where anyone can talk, discuss, and debate. If one of the roundtable members does not wish to discuss a particular topic, when it is their turn, they may simply say pass. We ask that roundtable members use appropriate language for the younger viewers of this live stream. Please refrain from any topics or words that may offend anyone. Once the open with some banging in the background, please mute your mics. Once the open roundtable discussion on the particular topic is complete, I will read off some comments from the OnLive fans chat box and allow for an open response from our table. Now, the chat box is located underneath this video if you're on the OnLiveFans.com website. If you're watching from YouTube or another method, I suggest you visit OnLiveFans.com and play the video on the top of the site. Then you can participate. Um, now, we might not cover all the topics that we discussed in the thread, as we may have some limited time, but um, let's start by introducing some of the members of our panel. All right, let's start with um, Jeremy Berg. You know him as oh. Jeremy. Oh, okay. I thought you were finishing that. Yeah, I'm Jeremy B on the forums, or uh, DeFreakso. Go by either one. That's my online fans. Uh, old name or my on live gamer tag right now. Um, host of uh, The Breaking Point and OnLiveFans.com, uh, the weekly podcast. I enjoy long walks by the beach and um, yeah, I love everybody. Yep, I'm done. Alright, um, let's move on to Chris Powell. You know him on OnLiveFans as the Dracula. That's right. I am the Dracula on all my fans. Um, I'm also uh, the editor of Bitloaders.com, uh, where we do um, um, a couple podcasts out there. Um, but we mainly focus on uh, downloadable and cloud gaming, um, including some online stuff. But we mainly focus on like uh, the Xbox and uh, the Sony and Nintendo platforms. Um, so yeah, that's about it. All right, let's move on to um, Steven Peterson. You know him from the Breaking Point, and his own live fans username is Alucard Blades. Hey, everyone. Uh, well, I just totally introduced myself. <laughs> um, I am co-host of the Breaking Point. I'm known as Alucard Blades. I'm a freelancer, both reviewer and writer, and one of the editors here at OnLiveFans.com. If you haven't listened to Jeremy and I's podcast, uh, get to it. We have a good time. Other than that, I'm glad to be here. All right, let's move on to Dramaximus. What's up? What's up? How's it going? What's up, everybody? Yeah. I'm Dramaximus. I'm, uh, I'm the biggest fanboy of on live that will ever be. That's right. And I'll say it. Yeah. That's right, haters. Thank you. All right, next up, let's go to Nick. Hello, this is Nick Pinesall. I uh, do the OnLive Week in Review, and I also uh, 
have my own uh, channel on YouTube under Pine Saw, and I also wrote a book or co-wrote called Baloney or Not, and it's a collection of paranormal stories written in a humorous form, and it's on Amazon.com. All right, let's move on to Ryan. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, my name's Ryan Nico. However you know me from the forums, um, I'm one of the admins on the site. My name currently right now is Phil Shifley, but give that a week and it'll probably change to something else. Um, also, we have a podcast that has been on, on live, fans.com, which was on live fans cast. Um, we are going to be coming back for that, too. Um, also, I am one of the co-hosts on the BitLoaders um, uh, podcast as well. Other than that, I like on live and video games and McDonald's. And I play hockey. I think that's all I got. All right, that's good enough. Um, Sean, are you here? Are you able to speak? Sean is not here, I don't believe. Um, so I, I think that covers everyone on the panel. Um, now, to start off the round table, we're going to start off with um, several topics. The first topic that I will ask, and we will start with Chris. What does everybody think about this current week's game release? Um, After Fall and Sanity was moved into the play pack, and Spell Force 2 Gold Edition was added to the play pack. Um, I have to be... Um I actually was excited that uh, After Fall and Sanity came to the play pack because I never got to pick it up um, when it was available as a play pass. Um, so to see that transition in the play pack um, got me kind of excited. Um, I still haven't played it a ton, so I can't really speak to the quality of the game. I know some people have said it's it's a little mediocre, um, but I still think it's uh, a good game to come into the play pack. It, um, it adds some quality there. Um, the, the other game, oh man, what was it called? Um, oh, Spell Force 2, right. I actually have been playing that quite a bit today, um, and I really like it. It's kind of, um, they, they did a good job of blending, like, the, um, the kind of dungeon um, crawling style RPG with an RTS. So it's, it's, it's a little different than anything I've really played before, but it, it works really well. Um, the, 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 the writing and dialogue is a little cheesy at times, and the graphics aren't the best. I'm not exactly sure when it was released, but... Uh, the game itself, it's it's a quality game, and I definitely think people should check it out because I think there's some fun to be had there. All right, um, let's move on to... Well, let's introduce um, Eric Peterson if he's here. Are you there, Pete, Eric? Okay. Um, Dramaximus, what's your take on this week's releases? Oh, uh, no, all right. Whatever. Just for more games. Uh, but uh, for Play Packs, which is it's awesome, I... Uh, yeah, I, after Fall I wanted to buy, but I didn't just, because I was like, uh, it's not what I wanted to buy right away. Sorry, you know, but I mean, it, it's cool. So I was glad that it switched over. Uh, Spell Force is a, is a neat game. I used to like those when I was younger. I used to love them, but now I'm not, I'm, I'm not in the mood for that kind of thing. But it, they're cool games for the play pack, I, you know. But I want some big games like everybody else, you know, so it's, it's, not, uh, <laughs> it's not that exciting. <laughs> All right, Jeremy, what's your take? Is my mic working? It is. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to have to pass because I haven't played either one. All right, so, Nick? Yeah. Uh, after Fall, eh, not too interested in that game. It looks okay. I'll probably play it now that it's in play pack, and it might change my mind. As far as Spell Force goes, it's a little bit more interesting. I've always liked the medieval-type themed games. Uh RTS is not really my style. I like to control one character at a time. I don't like micromanaging multiple characters, usually. But I'm going to give it a shot because it's in play pack, and I give all those games a shot. It's funny. I feel like I'm watching the Weekend Review video. <laughs> all right, um, Ryan, what's your take? Well, I remember when everybody was going crazy for After Fall. It was like, it's going to show up, it's going to show up, it's going to show up. And then honestly... Like, when it showed up, it wasn't the most amazing title out there, and I was kind of confused as to why people really liked it. Um, it's an okay game. I mean, I can't really say too much more. Spell Force, much better game. Um, I'm huge into RTS and dungeon crawling and all that stuff, and I have no I have no problem controlling multiple characters as long as each one has a, you know, kind of a 
the backup kind of story to each one. It's really neat. This one, like Chris said, pretty cheesy, really. So I can't really uh, say it's the most high quality game, but it's another. It's a nice game to come down live. It's a bit of the genre that's not really present, so it's nice to have another option other than that one other one that's on there. All right, um, Steven? I'm, I'm, I have mixed feelings. It's, it's nice to see Afterfall hit the play pack. I think it's neat when OnLive takes the time to put what was previously a play pass title and do what they promised initially and, and eventually move it over to the, to the play pack. I, I get tired of some people getting frustrated over a game they bought showing up in the play pack because to me there's no different than buying a game at release for $60 on your Xbox and then being upset that it's $20 in six months. That's just and that's time for you. But as to Spellforce, um, I'm getting an idea from everyone else that it may have been a bigger title in the past, but I think my biggest issue with that is simply that I'm quite with it in the most extent on knowing what games are coming out, what games are out. I've never heard of Spellforce, and I think the general consensus is people are going to get tired of seeing games come to online that they've never heard of. And I think people are ready just to see games that they at least even have known the name of, at least actually want to play all right, um, now I'm opening this up to the onlivefans.com chat box if anybody has any questions or comments. Um, I'm also opening up the table, so anybody have anything to say to anyone else? Well, one, I have to say it's interesting that I have never actually seen my fellow podcast buddies, like, face ever. But, um, no, to be honest, you know, like, to go back to the whole games going to play pack, you know, whatever, it's just the same thing as... If somebody last week on PSN bought Just Cause 2, because um, it was on sale, I think, this last week for 15 bucks with all the DLC, now, are they going to get angry because in a couple of weeks, they're also giving the game away for free? So it's like, you know, either way, it's going to happen, it's going to move, that's just how the games go. You know, people like to bring people to a, per a particular subscription service, and that's the way to do it. Sony's doing it by giving away a bunch of free games, um, you know, and on live does it by giving away play pack games. They both pretty much work the same way. You know, if you stop subscribing to uh, the to PS PS Plus, then you are gonna lose your games until you decide to come back. And it's the same thing for on live. So there's really no problem with it. You know, so really, I used to be one of the people who, who was annoyed by it, and now really, I see how it goes. I understand it. It's just how it's gonna be. And you know, for how inexpensive those services are, there's really no reason. If you even want to play one game, you might as well just get the, get it in general and play all the games. Anyone else have anything to say? Anyone in the chat box? Comments on the releases? Um, the Hill of Silence said, what's up to the podcast folks? Um, you know who he's talking to. Um, all right, well, it looks like nobody in the chat box has any comments on this week's game releases, and it looks like we're done talking about them. So we'll move on to the next topic. E3. OnLive had a lot of um, announcements to make at E3. Nothing concerning Sony or Gaikai or any of that, but um, I'll go through some of the announcements. Uh, there's games coming soon to OnLive. The ones that were announced were Aliens, Colonel Marines, um, The Cave, Darksiders 2, Hell Yeah, Hitman Absolution, Inversion, London 2012, Metro Last Light, Ravaged, Civilization 5, South Park, The Stick of Truth, and the um, add-on for Saints Row the Third, Enter the Dominatrix. Um, there's also a few other games that were on the board at E3, including which included virtual Tennis 4 and Deep um, Deep Black, I believe. Uh, so let's hear your opinions on these coming soon titles and what you think this means for OnLive. Chris? I actually got to play um, Aliens, Colonial Marines, and Hell Yeah um, during PAX East uh, when I wasn't in a drunken stupor. And I have to say, both of those games were really, really awesome. I was really surprised... Um, I'm really surprised to see Sega really kind of jumping in um, to online. You know, we've seen Sega support online with some of the um, Playpack titles um, over the um, past few months and stuff, but I, I don't believe we've seen them come out with um, actually uh, full Playpass titles and something as 
um, you know, AAA as uh, Aliens Clone Marines. So that's really exciting. Um, aside from that, I'm not um, terribly um, familiar with some of the other games. Uh, I know The Cave is uh, the new Double Fine game, so that's uh, fairly exciting as well. Um, some of the, yeah, you know, I, like I said, uh, some of the other games, uh, South Park and Stick of Truth is going to be awesome as well. So um, I was really, really surprised to see some, some really uh, high-quality games, you know, coming uh, to online. So. All right, Jim Axmas. Uh, I was, I don't know really anything about South Park, the game, like I did, <laughs> but I'm looking forward to that, I was surprised to see that coming down live, uh, Hitman looks beautiful, man, it looks beautiful, and, you know, it's funny, I talk a lot about shooter games, whatever, but, I mean, it, it looks like a really good one, um, I don't know, this is pretty cool, it's, uh, <laughs> as long as it all comes on release day, you know, I'll be much happier, <laughs> but, uh, no, the list looks good, it looks pretty cool. Um, Eric, uh, you didn't get to introduce yourself. Would you like to do that now? Uh, we can't hear you. Is your mic muted? Uh, we will try this as long as my internet will allow, because uh, my router is crapping out. Um, but I'm uh, no, I'm Dermac on the online forums and on uh, online and uh, live in Kansas. I'm a typesetter. I print stuff. And that's what I do. Uh, what's your take on this week's releases? Uh, I actually haven't seen any of these this week's releases except for the little bit I saw of Spellforce. Uh, it's yeah, I've been working a lot, and actually I'll be going to work right after this. So that kind of stuff. How about but, uh, the How about the games that were um, announced at E3? Oh, uh, the E3 games, uh, they were actually pretty cool. It was nothing I didn't expect. Uh, I was hoping to hear. Maybe another Rockstar game, maybe, I don't know, an EA Activision, but, you know, hey, we'll take what we can get. All right, Jeremy, what's your opinion? Oh, God, where do I start? Um, there's a good amount of games, I suppose. I mean, the titles speak for themselves, South Park. I mean, that's a good title. I mean, Darksiders 2. Civilization. I mean, yeah, okay, they're all good, but should we be, I mean, I guess at this point, we should be appreciative to get all these games, being that, you know, the lineup of games we've gotten has been so um, sparse, I get, I guess, and just not, you know, breathtaking. So, I mean, for taking that into consideration, yeah, I'm happy that we're getting these games. Should we be getting more? Yes. Should we be getting more AAA titles than we're going to be getting? Yes. Just because this is E3 doesn't mean that, you know, oh, I'm going to be completely gung-ho about this and this is the best thing that's ever happened on live. No, it isn't. They could still be doing more and I still expect more. Alright. A little bit of negativity from Mr. Positive. Um, Nick, what's your opinion? Well, I think, uh, why are these games on the list? We know that they're going to have more games than this. They always do. There's games we get every week that they've never said they're coming, but they come. And then these games are on their list of upcoming games. So are these the best games they expect to come out? Uh, maybe maybe they are. Maybe this is their, their ace in the hand. Um, I do like Darksiders 2. Darksiders 1, uh, I played for the first time on OnLive, and I one of the first games I beat for OnLive, so I really like that game. Uh, biggest surprise for me was South Park, because I saw that at uh, Microsoft's E3 conference for the first time, and I thought, wow, you know, actually looks like a good South Park game for once, and I'm glad that's coming to OnLive, because then I can buy it from OnLive. Uh, the other games, uh, Revenged is kind of interesting. It actually was a Kickstarter project, I found out. Uh, and uh, if Inversion looks okay. And I guess that's all I'm really interested in from the list. All right, um, Brian, what's your opinion? Well, to be honest, I'm going to kind of have to uh, mirror Jeremy on here. I'm happy to see the titles. Really, I am. I'm glad to see that uh, Darksiders is coming. Although, really, to be honest, a lot of the THQ titles we expected. So I'm not not super surprised. It's nice that they're showing up. Because Darksiders 2, 
no matter how you buy it, it should be a day one title. Hopefully you guys buy it on live, obviously. Um, hell yeah. Well, title speaks for itself how I feel about it. Um, and, you know, some of the other games, it's kind of like, all right, we had a feeling they were going to come. Um, it's great to see Sega on it with the new Alien game because that's going to be a monster title. I think that will probably be one of the higher selling ones um, out of that entire list next to maybe Darksiders. Um, and and he's kind of right as well. Uh, Pine Saul's right. Um, these are the big titles. I'm, I think that really when it comes down to it is what's going to come else with it. You announce huge titles, but if we remember last year, they released this huge long title of like 30 titles, and I would say maybe 25, 30% of them showed up. So that's the main question. First, are we going to get these titles on time, um, which on live hasn't always been right on with? Um, you know, um, and also... I think it's going to come down to multiplayer community for some of them, um, or else some of them are just going to be waiting for price drops. That's all I got. All right, Steven, what's your opinion? Yeah, I'm going to mirror some, too. I mean, there's some of those titles that I was really excited to see actually confirmed. Hitman was, uh, was a nice semi-surprise. Um, I mean, I, f I feel like everyone knew Darksiders 2 was coming, I and mean, they, they basically announced that earlier. Uh, Metro Last Light was a nice semi-surprise. Um, the South Park was actually a genuine surprise. That's, it's nice to see because the game looks actually hysterical. But my biggest issue is not just the games. It's nice to see big games. We got some triple A's. Seeing Colonial Marines is awesome. But my biggest thing is both these games are from publishers that we already know are with on live. Like, like, you know, like Ryan said, THQ, I mean, Ryan or Nick, THQ is to be expected. And I, honestly, I feel like THQ is struggling so much financially that they're basically reaching out to any venue, every venue possible anyway. Um, so THQ games don't surprise me. Seeing Sega get on board wholeheartedly with their titles was a nice surprise. Um, but what, I, what was missing to me is I wanted to see not even so much more games in the sense as I would like to see more publishers come on board full throttle. You know, where's Rockstar? Rockstar, as, you know, they, they did touch controls for L.A. Noir, which was awesome. That was above and beyond for them. But what happened? Where's... Where's Max Payne 3? You know, where's uh, any any update on GTA 5? Is there's I feel like what the what when you look at these titles you can get excited, but it almost makes you realize is how many more titles aren't on there, as much as there are titles that are on there. All good points. Um, now I'll open the table up to the chat box. If anybody has any comments that they like to say, and I'll also open the table up. It among us, um, anybody have anything else you say? I want to put your Maximus on the spot, bro. You guys have some more to say. You're you're a, you're a big talker in the chat box. Come on. I, I, it's just the negativity doesn't bother me in general. You know, it's when people repeat it over and over all day long, every day. I'm disappointed too, man. I want big games. I want them now. But the fact is. Online is the freaking best, you know? <laughs> like, there's no other what? service like it, dude. There's no other service oh. like it. Nothing okay, like hold it. on, hold on, no. Okay, first of all, this isn't negativity. This is actual, con this is more constructive criticism. This is something that you hope that on live will hear. Maybe somebody, maybe some of the dev, maybe some of the devs that are working with them. It's not constructive. You gotta keep in mind if we didn't like on live and we didn't want to see it succeed, we wouldn't all be sitting here in this round table and there wouldn't be, you know, hundreds if not thousands of members on on live fans it's it's not that we feel that we should have more but we want to know if more is coming it, it also if we're pro what we're doing is we're providing facts and if you're taking those facts as us being negative then there's probably some truth to it then and you know something's got something's got to change that's all right <laughs> first of all you know, argument. You didn't hear me say I want the big name games now, right? They're like, well, we want more titles. We want more titles, right? Yes, <laughs> I know. Oh man, ah crap. There's another thing. I totally forget what it was. Sorry. Well, one thing too that someone mentioned in the online fans uh, chat is uh, where's you know key titles that people were hoping for, like Borderlands 2. You figure if you have Borderlands in Game of the Year, it's not there. Um, also, hearing about Witcher for how long, it's still not showing up. 
that's kind of one of the problems is, you know, we hear what's coming. We're told what's coming, and then it doesn't show up. Now, Borderlands, of course, they weren't. They didn't tell us. We just kind of hoped. And I think that's part of the problem, too, is people kind of hope a little bit too much. So There's, there's also a lot of uh, bad tastes left in our mouths from previous uh, things that happened. Uh, what new game is going to come out that's going to be the next Space Marine uh, fiasco? Well, I think that was Saints Row. You well, know. I mean, it, 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 are, what I mean is, is it going to continue to happen at that pace? Are we going to have more multiplayer problems? Are we going to, I mean, it, who knows? They, All Life still needs to prove themselves. Right, and we, even with that, too, saying, you know, go along with that, it's not the mistakes that we have a problem with. It's how long is On Live going to take to fix those issues? Or on top of that, how long is it, how long will they keep saying it's coming, it's coming, it's coming? Instead of just saying, we have an idea of when it is, and then don't say, well, we're hoping to have it done by next week, or we're hoping to have it done this. Just say, it's going to take us a while, we'll let you know when it's going to be. That's one of the main things. I, I really think OnLive just needs, I understand entirely this is a new tech, cloud gaming is brand new, especially at least the level OnLive is doing it, and I understand that it's going to take a while to port games you know, into the system. But this is something that they just straight up need to iron out and, and and get it out of the way. I mean, okay, yes, hopefully now the multiplayer issues are gone since it seems like they've kind of gotten a friend system in place and an invite system in place, and that's great. You know, that, that should have been there from the start. Like, I mean, you know, just like to me, and we'll get, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, but you look at everyone was expecting Nintendo to finally get on board with social interaction and social communities. Online just needs to get on board with the basics. They need hard release dates. They need to be able to stick to them. You know, that or don't say it. And I agree, a hundred percent. There's some, right. just, there's some basic things they need to do. Mm -hmm. All right, let let me go over some of the comments in the chat box. I don't want to leave these people out stranded. Um, uh, DT Marjesty fifty eight said it was Borderlands two. Um, there's no announcement on that. It was one of the coming soon titles previously. Um, let me see. That is creepy. The Hill Silence said, I really hope on live will deliver on their promises. We need to still see the 2011 games come. Yeah, there's some 2011 games that have not been released. That's released. a shame. Um, Ortega Sachs said Space Marine wasn't that bad. Are you uh, kidding? Okay, never mind. <laughs> not even... Uh, Cam not 50, talking about it being Cam 555 5, 5 said Space Marine felt like an overhyped movie. Um, or... <laughs> Tega Sack said on live time equals steam time. Um, the Hill Silence said I agree that we need some hard release dates. Any comments? Uh, that's right. Still goes back to release dates is a uh, is a big one. Don't just say they're coming. Let us know if they're let us know when they're coming. They're gonna be on time with the retail. Let us know that. You know, don't just give us a list and pick and choose when you're going to release the dates. And that's one thing is one thing that was mentioned a little bit ago when it comes to porting the titles over and everything like that. If they're newer titles, like how Saints Row was, um, and say when Borderlands comes or any of these other ones, they should be, on live, should be working with the developers ahead of time so that the porting issue isn't so bad. I understand porting old games, but porting new games shouldn't be as hard if you're working with people. Because remember, THQ was supposedly working with On Live when it came to Saints Row, and nothing seemed to have worked right. So that's one of the that's one of the big issues for me. I know I really agree with you, and I think this is where they need to step up because half these games on their list this year at E3, like Aliens, and I'm, I don't know the release date for Hitman. They're months and months out. Like I know Aliens isn't Q1 2013. Get it done now. You got eight months till this release. You got eight months to iron out every single bug, get everything taken care of, and get that sucker out flawless on release day. To me, that's the biggest thing. You have these titles so far in advance. You know they're coming. Work on them. There's no excuse for a buggy release. That, that brings up another thing that I wanted to get into too. I mean, with communication, like you guys were saying, um, instead of hiding from us now, instead of hiding from the fans that told you you need to communicate better and you need to give us concrete facts, why not just talk to us and tell us facts? 
Because ever since we had this whole entire huge thing on the forums where we were saying, oh, well, you don't give us enough uh, information, you don't communicate enough with us, you, you started communicating, but then it gradually got lower and lower and lower, and now it just seems like you guys are afraid to actually give us any information at all. Okay, right. let's, let's focus. <laughs> we're getting a little off topic here. So let's focus on some of the news that happened today. I know um, there's a lot of it. Like uh, release dates. <laughs> like release dates. <laughs> uh, actually, there was no release dates given, so that'll be off topic. Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, the other announce, an, I should say, another announcement at E3 was on lives coming to LG TVs with Google TV too. Um, What's your opinions on that, uh, Chris? I have a Sanyo, so I don't care about that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Eric, what's your opinion? Eric, are you there? Okay, um, Dr. Maximus? Um, I, I think it's cool for anybody that's not already a gamer and playing, like, you know, people that don't game. You know, that's really all it's good for because, I mean, I have a TV too. I'm not going to buy a TV just to get on live on it. I got a console and I got the client so set up. But it, it's cool, though. It's cool for, you know, to get it around more. All right, Jeremy, what's your opinion? On live is for, you know, people who are looking for a cost-effective way to play games on a budget. No one's going to want to buy a damn new TV just to play on live. Waste of time, waste of money. Should have been focusing on other things. Nick? I think it's a good thing. Um, you know, people aren't going to buy a TV for on live, but they, you know, might play on live because it's in their TV. Uh, and LG is actually a pretty good brand. I used to sell TVs, and you know, they're right up there with Sony and Samsung as quality TVs. I just hope that, uh, like they said before, that it's already in some of the TVs that are already out as apps, and they just need to be activated. I think I remember them saying something like that. Cause my mom has a smart TV from LG already, and it's got Netflix and Hulu and that stuff, and hopefully it can play on live too, uh, but I just don't know. They haven't said if it's going to be in only upcoming TVs or if it can be in uh, current TVs as well. Brian? Um, I'm in favor of it being in TVs. The only my only problem with adding all these widgets and programs and apps into your TVs is I don't know if anyone has used a lot of these, but half the time they're buggy and they tend to lock up, and you got to go and start them all over. And this this is a problem. It is and, and I totally agree with Jeremy on this one. They should have been working on something else. Um, there's plenty of ways to play on live as it is, you know. I mean, your tablets, micro console, everything like that. I think on live should have been focusing their energies differently. Now, if we put it back to the TV thing, yeah, I've got a, a Sony 3D TV already, and in the living room we have an LG. What they need to do is, okay, fine, you're going to put it in TVs, but what about people who already have LGs, like really nice ones? Are you going to allow the, then they haven't said anything, but are you going to allow the widgets to be downloaded? Are you, you know, why leave other people out? My TV in the living room, it's a 55 inch and it has Bluetooth connectivity. So why haven't they, why are they going to let you? They're not telling you anything. So they're just saying, oh, go out and buy a new TV. I mean, that's really about it. That's not going to, you know, that's not really going to work over. It's nice for people who are getting new TVs, but I just got a TV a year ago. Why am I going to go out and buy another one right now? All right, uh, somebody needs to mute their mic. I'm hearing some feedback. Uh, Steven, what's your opinion? I'm kind of on the same line with everybody. I, it's a nice idea. It's 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 great. You know, it, it's like like I, I agree with Pine Sol in the sense that I well Jeremy too. Is that nobody's going to buy it just for the online app? But it's a nice way if somebody gets goes out to get an LG 3D TV. Oh look, online. I might as well give this a shot. That's a nice touch. But Ryan's entirely right that it was, it does not need to be the focus right now. OnLive seems so intent on getting every single user in the world that they've forgotten that there is the aspect of keeping your user base. Getting new users isn't OnLive's problem. Keeping them is their problem. And I would have much rather seen what, whatever large amount of money it took to get this deal with LG go into a deal with Bethesda or go into just 
putting down some serious dashboard and overhaul improvements in general is I think OnLive has a user base. They said they have millions of subscriptions. Keep us. Give us reasons to stay. Don't keep trying to go out and just get more people. All right. Um, I'm going to give my opinion of the LG TV thing. Uh, I don't... A lot of you said that you think they're wasting time by doing this. I don't think it's much... I don't think they're wasting much time by moving it to TV. I think it's more uh, something they put out there and LG actually spent time on. I think it's basically going into Google TV and uh, LG is just utilizing that. I think a lot of other TVs will end up doing, TV manufacturers will end up doing the same thing because it's free to add. It's not like it costs them anything and it's not really much work to get in there since as long as they have Google TV. TV um, yeah, that's my opinion. Uh, I'd like to open that up to the chat box on OnLiveFans.com uh, and to you guys. See, what even you said, oh, go ahead. What you said makes sense, Ed. It does. And if it doesn't take much work, then great. But I would, the risk of going off topic again, I think this does a little bit go back to the fact that we just don't know anything. That's the problem. Is, you know, we hear something like that, and we're like, well, how much work did that take? How much money did they put in that? You know, for something that's not going to be all that, well, not useful at all, really, to the main online user base, unless you happen to have bought a brand new LG 3D TV. But if it didn't take much work, then sure. You know, it's, it's always nice to have new additional ways to hit online. I just feel like they've done a great job getting it out there, and they need to focus on who's here. Well, the um, OnLive the on -live app is available on Google TV, so you think, you think that um, it's pretty just simple just to add it to a, a TV system as long as they have Google TV. Google yeah. TV is just the viewer. It's not a player right now. Yeah, which that's about as effective as the the player was originally on the on the iPhone and iPad and, or the iPad and whatnot. But here's like the main thing is though, like I agree with Stephen again, and this goes back to it. First of all, I think it's it's great, but it's unneeded tech, um, and he's right. Where take this money that you're using to make widgets, put it somewhere that's going to bring more people and keep more people. Because I'll be honest. My use of OnLive fluctuates based on what they add to the service. So if they're not doing anything, then I'm going to log on four months later and find 47 brag clips in my mailbox and realize I didn't play any of these games, mostly because, one, OnLive doesn't really put out the fanfare of saying, hey, we're releasing these big-name titles. And, two, it's like you know they're not doing anything to say, hey, we have a game. Even if it was a AAA game a month, just one, maybe once every two months. It's a way of getting me to come back because what OnLive ultimately is doing with their lack of adding main content. I'm not talking about the uh, the uh, the and the what you call it the uh, the indie games and stuff, but it's like if you want people to go out and buy a new TV and everything like that, you're gonna have to be able to to get to have OnLive. You're gonna have to be able to show them, look, we have content. So here's a reason to go and pick up a TV with the OnLive app as opposed to getting a Sony TV or getting a something else. Because they're going to look at it and they'll be like, eh, you know, what is this that they're putting on there? So that, That's a good point. But I had to say that you did mention that you had to give them a way of getting more members onto OnLive. And I think putting it in a TV as opposed to making them go out and spend 100 bucks on micro consoles is, is an easy way to get new members. I mean, at least they're going to give it a try. Maybe they well, won't be happy. There's a there's a place and a time for everything. This isn't the place or time for that. They need to stable get a stable product first. They need to get something that you know everybody wants. And this isn't the time for that to be putting it on Google TV. Well, in my opinion. it's it's kind of like the chicken and the egg though. Do developers come because they they're offering it on a lot of platforms, or do uh, um, does on live start? being more successful because developers come. I'm not a developer, but I don't think any developer is going to care that it's on Google TV. Oh, I think they will. It's not a console. No one cares. Well, but here's the thing, though, too, is, okay, say you put it on all these TVs, right? But nobody knows what the hell it is. And let's be honest, OnLive has not been marketing themselves very well. They're, they have no print. They have some random ads that pop up on YouTube provided you had typed into Google at some time. Um, 
they have no print, they have no radio, they had TV for a short bit, then it's just like, <laughs> okay, so someone's going to be like, oh, what's that little icon? Oh, it's some game thing that I know nothing about. And then they're going to they're gonna just pass it over, just like I pass over friggin' YouTube on my TV. I don't need it. It doesn't matter. I've got a computer for that. All right, um, I think your Maximus wants, has something to say. Oh, uh, yeah, I lost there. Uh, <laughs> LG is obviously not for the existing fans. Like, why would it be? They're not expecting every online fan user on the forums to be like, oh, hey, buy a TV. No, they know it's not going to happen. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Ryan, earlier you were saying, like, well, what about the people that own the LG? Uh, what happens then? It's the same argument as a PSN game going on sale or going free on a PS Plus after it was just on sale. You know, it's the same thing. Like, it's that's in the past is done. Well, I, okay, I'm not exactly, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is for them to be able to put widgets on there, should they, shouldn't they? they also make it downloadable? I'm not saying, oh, crap, i got to go buy a new TV. I'm just saying if it's not going to be available, then, then you know, make it available for everybody. It needs to be a firmware upgrade for, for current LG 3D TVs. Exactly. All right, uh, Nick, do you have something to say? Um... Did they say if this was for uh, LG TVs with Google TV? Yes, LG T smart TVs with Google See, TV the, too. They already, have, they already have the Google TV app. It's done, and they can easily port it to the Google TV from you know Android 4.0. It's similar, but to port the app to a TV that's not based on Android might be more difficult and less worth it. So it might not get backported to older TVs that are not running Android. All right. Um, let me. Uh, that that's a good point. Um, let me go to the chat box and see what people have to say there. Uh, the Hill Silence said it's a catch twenty two. Really, games attract gamers, but publishers want a huge user base. Sort of like what I mentioned. Um, Ash Person said more so to get more members is just to put it on Chrome. It's the most used browser. That's a decent point. Um, Transmit. Transmeta Nivan said, if OnLive ever goes browser plugin, I'm out the door for good. Uh, Goofboy said, OnLive kept itself small so they could move fast. Cam555 says, they are stalling big time. I think they don't know how to get on any further. Uh, Goofboy says, OnLive is selling you bargain basement games for no one else that no one else, is, else wants. Anybody care to comment? Hmm. Well, I'll go back to what the Hill the Silent said, which is what you said. Um, basically, if I'm a developer right now and I see a struggling fan base and um, and like lack of quality, um, then I'm gonna have a hard time putting my game on the on the con on the service. But that can always change, and hopefully it does. So I'll go with that. Also, with the uh, with uh, what was said about the Chrome browser thing. That wouldn't be a bad idea either. You know, that's you know, or any you know, if you want to get Google users, definitely put it on Chrome. Have it as like a little uh like something you can add to your taskbar as an application. I I entirely agree. I, I will understand the catch twenty two. Um, you know, you gotta have an amount of gamers and the games bring the gamers. But to me I think some of the issue here is not that we're not attracting gamers, it's that we simply just don't keep them. And right. You know, I mean, you can have as many people in a party in the house if you want, but the floor is crumbling away. You're just losing people. I think, well, you know, when Goofboy said they're, 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 they're keeping small so they can move fast, I kind of laugh because I don't really see them moving fast. That's what they need to do. Right now, they're still early on in their life cycle. They're two years in. They need to perfect the crap out of everything. They, they need, they need, the, they need their, the UI, the dashboard, the friend system, the multiplayer, everything to be speckle clean, spotless. And, you know, then people will stay. Then the user base will grow, and then more developers will come. But the problem is you can attract as many people as you want, but 90% of the hardcore gamers, even if they say, oh, look, Aliens is coming on live, they're going to give it a try, be like, oh, this isn't as nice as my 360, and they're gone. Right, and definitely, and that's one thing, too, is, you know, you talk about keeping the gamers and all that. Really what it's going to come down to is, you know, a gamer's attention span for the most part. You know, it's cool being able to flip through the arena and doing all that really, really neat stuff. But one of the main things is that 
if you're not gonna if you're gonna keep giving them short little indie games to play, they're not they're gonna say, oh, okay, so is this like a game tap? Is you know we saw how that went um, on live for the most part. Just needs to be like, hey, here's what we have to offer you, and just be honest about it. Don't make us wait and say, you know, we're gonna give you all these titles. So. All right, um, your Maximus or Nick, do you have anything you say? All right, let's move on to something that's sort of related, um, talking about browser plugins and stuff. Um, OnLive announced today that uh, they have their in-browser capabilities. Uh, what do you guys think about that? Uh, let's start with your Maximus. Oh, uh, well, it's awesome. That's, that's it. It's, it's cool that they did that right on. All right, Jeremy. Um, with uh, Jer Maximus, yeah, it's awesome. Next, um, Eric. <laughs> uh, no, you ha are you not done yet? No, I'm done. All right, then shut up, Eric. Oh, wow, <laughs> Eric. What what do you have to say about the um, in browser capability for online? Oh, it seems to be okay. Uh, it's just one of those things that. Um, it, it just seems tacked on. I, I don't know. It, everything else pretty much has a browser. We have a browser on our phones, on our computers, on our it will be on our TVs pretty soon. I don't know why OnLive needs a browser other than that 10 gigabit thing. But you know, no, no, I, it's, it's not a browser. It's, it's in browser. Um, it's you can launch OnLive in your browser now. Oh, oh no, that's actually really cool. They should have done that a long time ago. I agree. Um, Nick? I'm actually wondering if this will lead to uh, games uh, that are demos and not play passes coming to OnLive through their uh, browser uh, access, sort of how Gaikai can do it with EA. I think that EA pulled out of OnLive because they didn't want to offer full games for sale because they want to make their sales from their own uh, platform origin. But they don't seem to have a problem offering demos that are in the cloud. So perhaps OnLive will offer demos from EA uh, using their white label browser system. That's a really good point. Um, I think it might allow them to offer demos now, and some other de developers might come and put their games on the service. Uh, Ryan? Um, I think it's a good idea. One, because if a person who doesn't have OnLive wants to actually be able to check it out, now they'll be able to just click it right there and be set and ready instead of having to bounce around over and over and over again. So yeah, and I agree I agree um, about the whole uh, about the about the uh, bringing uh, demos on and stuff. That makes a lot of sense. I mean sure Gaikai right now is only doing demos but it seems to be working for them and they're getting some people on. And the good thing if they were to do that the answer, I mean the idea is actually correct. We'll be able, we'll, maybe we'll see some Activision or some EA and everything like that. Just because they're listed with OnLive doesn't mean they have any incentive to, to do anything. But if they put some of their demos on there, they can see how many people are actually interested who have OnLive. And then they'll actually be able to say, oh, look, there are people on Live who want, on OnLive who want to play our games. Let's go ahead and see what we can do to at least kind of help that out. Um, another point is, uh, I think one of the reasons they did this whole in-browser thing is so that merchants and developers can actually sell games directly from their website and also demo games directly from their website. Because now you can go to the developer's website who might be promoting their game on their website, and you can go there, click a link to purchase the game, and it will automatically open up the game in on live. Uh, Steven, what do you have to say? To uh, they don't have any full games yet. I'm, I don't really consider Gaikai much of anything until they actually drop the first full game at the resolution they're showing. But I, I think it's stupid to act like they're not there and that they're not potential, if not actual, competition. And I think this is a good step for OnLive to, to realize, all right, here's competition. We need to step up our game a little bit. And I just hope it begins to reflect in a lot of other areas. Good points. Um, by the way, we have 30 viewers watching this right now. It was up to 30 five or so, just to keep you guys updated. Um, now let's open it up to the chat box. What do you guys think about the in-browser plugin? And let's open it up to everybody here. 
I don't know. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to agree with Steven. seems like we have this thing going back and forth here. Um, but really, I mean, he's completely right. Gaikai might not have any full games out right now. Um, but when they do, if they do, I mean, we still don't know their full intentions. They keep saying one thing, doing the other, and we know how how much of a, a wordsmith uh, Perry can be. So who knows? But um, I think on live should have done this a long time ago. Um, there was kind of there was honestly no reason why Gaikai, who has absolutely nothing to offer at this at this point, should have done should have come out with some sort of uh, of integration first. Which for them it was not so much what they did. The, you know you bounce it through their website and everything, but actually putting it on Facebook. I was honestly hoping that on live would have done a Facebook like um, app the way that uh, Gaikai did because it worked remarkably well for them. So on live could actually get a whole lot of a, a whole lot of new users that way too. Yes, it goes viral. Yeah, it definitely. I mean, every time every time Jeremy plays a game, which has been a whole hell of a lot lately, <laughs> you see you see Jeremy Berg is playing this 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 and this and this and. Um, Another guy who's not here, but he's works with us on, on our podcast as well. Um, uh, he actually um, it's showing all his um, it's showing all of his achievements that he's getting. So it's like that would be great instead of people clicking on it, being like, "What is this?" It should just pop open, boom, right there on Facebook. It would be an awesome opportunity. The browser is definitely a good step in that direction, and I hope they continue to move it. Yeah, I, I want to add one thing into it. I hope that they do continue on with it and it doesn't become another micro console, it doesn't become another on live desktop because how many things has on live done so far where it's like you're just sitting there looking at it and just waiting for updates exactly. you're waiting for expansions, you're waiting for upgrades, you're waiting for something new I hope that they actually you know, take this seriously and put that extra effort that needs to be put into it to make something uh, good yeah, I agree with that 100%. Because so I'll tell you right now, I I got a micro console for free, but I also bought a micro console for somebody else, and that is honestly feeling like it's completely wasted. Um, it's fun to use, but they were saying that you know you'd be use, able to use it with most of your games, and we were gonna work on uh, compatibility to make it work with the uh, with the with the controller. Turns out the last one I think was Frontlines that they tried to do that on. And amnesia and frontlines was terrible, and it's just one other thing where okay, it's just okay if it's just gonna do this, I'm just gonna play on the PC with my keyboard and mouse, and so hopefully like they can continue to drive this browser thing to something that will actually be usable for everybody and accessible, and will continue to update as it goes through. Online needs to be very careful because I feel like if they're not, they could very easily become the the Dreamcast of cloud gaming. And the second thing, they showed up first with some great tech, and they had some neat ideas, but they're just, if they're not careful, they're just going to get overshadowed by the latecomers who come rolling in far more ready and set to go than online trying to be like, okay, now we can do this, and now we can do this. And I do agree about what Ryan said about the micro console as well, is they come out with an awesome product, and you're like, all this hype, and then you never hear about it again. Like, even the, even the buzz over online desktop is, is gone, you know, and you, especially the buzz and... My, my two cents on the whole micro console issue is that if a game comes on live, other than the ones that are impossible to do, and I admit there are a few, but not many, a game needs to be standard keyboard, mouse, slash, controller compatible. There just should not be keyboard and mouse only. That just defeats on live's entire purpose of play it anywhere. All right. Um, how about Nick or Dramaximus or Eric? Any comments? Well, I'm not sure if we're on the topic of controller compatibility, but... It, it seems that a lot of games could easily be converted to controller compatibility. There's a lot of point-and-click games that only need a mouse button and a joystick, you know, the joystick and a button to to play. There's Jolly Rover. There's the uh, Eden Eden Hunt Quest that just came out. There's a bunch of games that only need a few buttons and a control stick. And I just don't see why, besides the fact that they need to test the game play it all the way through, make sure there's no hiccups or places you can't pass because you don't have a keyboard, but other than that, I don't know why there aren't more games that are gamepad compatible. Alright, um, let's go to the chat box and see what people are saying there. Um, 
we we proposed a question. Uh, no, I don't know what we asked. Uh, it was about the in-browser capabilities. Uh, DT Majesty fifty eight said it's good for developers. Uh, Goofboy says on live offers arena and soon multi view amazing. Multi view is something that we we're going to talk about next. Uh, Goofboy said on live is the best that offers spectate mode that no other system does. Um, and DJ Majesty liked the comment about the Dreamcast by Steven. Um, all right, well, I think we'll go on to the next topic now, which is the uh, on-live multi-view. Uh, Eric, let's start with you. What do you think about on-live multi-view? Eric, you there? All right, I don't think we can hear Eric. Uh, Jer Maximus, what's your opinion on multi-view? Uh, I... That's exciting to tell to me, as usual. <laughs> but uh, no, I um, I you know, I went to the arcade a lot, so spectating is like my favorite thing on the service besides playing. And then, so you know, I love playing, I love watching, I can do both. I mean, that's to me, that's gamer heaven. I I freaking love it. I can't, I can't wait to try it. Like I want to try it. <laughs> All right, Jeremy, your opinion? It's great. It's nothing that couldn't have been announced outside of E3, just like with the browser and the games. I don't feel it's anything E3 worthy, but it is a good addition. Okay, Nick, what's your opinion? Uh, it seems like an alright feature. I'm not really sure how useful it's going to be. Um, playing multiplayer with somebody online and seeing their screen might be useful, but you know what I think they should do? They should let you log in two accounts at the same time on your local computer. That way two people can play a multiplayer game that, that doesn't offer split screen, but the multi-view can give you a split screen view if you can log in two accounts. Good, good opinion. I like that idea. Uh, Brian? Brian, you there? Uh, Ryan? Ryan? All right, Steven, how about you? Uh, Pine Salt just blew my mind right there because I hadn't thought about that. I think that's an actually a genius, genius idea because I really feel like the lack of any kind of effective local multiplayer is a real downside to 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 on live currently. But besides that, I think the whole thing is great. I mean, it, it's you know it's cool to be able, especially if you're playing a, a a co-op game that requires a ton of cooperation, to be able to see two screens at once. But I, I mean, I will admit, I'm you know, I'm not I'm not like your Maximus. I'm probably in the minority that I actually barely ever go to the arena on live. I'll go for like three seconds, kind of be like, wow, there's a whole bunch of games being played. Then I'll leave and go play my own game. And and I know I'm probably the minority in that sense, but so to me, it's not quite the most amazing thing in the world. But I can see its uses. I think Pine Sol's use is the best use I've heard of it, and they need to do that. All right, um, Ryan, you there? I don't know what's up with Ryan. He's up oh, pass. Okay. Um, I'll open it up to the chat box. What's your guys' opinions of on live multi view? Uh, let's hear them. Uh, and I'm opening the table here. Oh, one one other thought I had on the multi view was I'm worried about how it will affect the quality of the stream if you're showing three streams at once. I mean, you know, everyone knows the arena quality is less. Uh, than the current your actual game, so I mean maybe we'll just get two arena feeds like that quality, but I don't. I think it needs to be very certain that it does not affect the quality of yours. I actually think that would depend on when it's combined. If it's combined at the server and then sent to you, there shouldn't be any effect on the quality at all. If it's sent to you as two full streams and combined on your end, then yeah, you'd be doubling your stream. My my guess is it's going to be combined on the server and it won't really affect it much, if at all. Um, let's see what the chat box has to say. Uh, Goofboy said, Multiview offer, offers you easy entry into multiplayer lobbies. It is a great addition. There are numerous ways to use Multiview. Camboy say going to be distracting 
a waste of stream bandwidth, more glitches on predicting nail. Um, Goof Boy said, "What game is my mate playing? Uh, what game is my mate playing on?" Oh, hang on, I got multi-view. He's showing that as an example of how you can use it. Um, Trans made a Naven wants wants to know what happens to being able to play remote local player for stuff like Virtual Tennis 2009. Um, that looks like that's about it. Uh, Transmit and even liked Pine Sol's idea. Uh, that's Nick. Um, DJ Majesty 58 said it would be great for Borderlands 2 co-op. Hint, hint. Giving some hints to on live, I guess. Um, Ortega Sachs says on live needs good gaming first. LOL. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll throw in here real quick. I just sure. one based off what they said. I actually thought of one. It's not really you know the most probably what they'd advertise it for. But I thought one unique idea is if you and a bud were playing the same single player game or even you know co op game, and you're stuck in a certain part, it's actually kind of useful to be able to be like, all right. Well, I'll show you my screen, and we'll look at our screens both at the same time, and I'll walk you through the segment when you're stuck. That's actually kind of handy. You know, that's it's not the end idea. of the yeah. It's not the end of the world, awesome, but it, it's handy. So I mean, that's to be that's exactly what was my whole idea when I heard the multi view. I was like, oh, handy. Anybody have comments, Drew Maximus? Uh, well, I, I thought that was a good point. I didn't even think of that initially. So I was just, I thought it was a cool feature. I didn't even think of that. But yeah, I, I message friends all the time, and, you know, I'm stuck or somebody else is stuck, so that's that's pretty cool. You just view them and be like, hey, dude, do this. <laughs> Jeremy, you have anything you say? Am I the only one that's not blinded by this crap? I mean, like, it's, okay, yeah, it is what it is. I mean, is anyone else expecting more, though, from E3? When did E3 use, uh, lose its charm? When did I mean? Yeah, I, uh, I don't know. Like two thousand and eight, we should have been expecting more <laughs> than this, more than things that we've already been told and they're already anticipating. But I guess that might be a different conversation. But that might be brought up later. I'm done. I think right. everybody agrees with you. I think we're just kind of just discussing little more localized topics at this point. Yeah. 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 Now that I'm back, real quick, I'll give my little quick on this whole multi-view thing. Um, Nick, completely correct. If we can sit here and do multi-view, why can't we do two-player uh, two player split? It works, be able to sign in, whatever, but apparently their head's somewhere else. And um, But it is a cool feature. I mean, it's neat, but uh, who's really going to use it? How often are you going to use it? Sure, it'll be cool to play with it first, and then what are you going to do with it afterwards? And Jeremy's correct, 100%, and I think I've said this a few times in the last two days. So... I'm just going to agree with him, and I'm not really going to go into it. Well, uh, you know, the the same gets said a lot about the, all the other conferences. How many times, you know, were we chatting about it? Oh, Sony's conference was boring. Microsoft's conference was boring. Nintendo, boring. You know, I mean, I I totally agree. I'm just saying, man, you know, it's not just on live. <laughs> no one's putting it right on on live, but when it comes to your presentation... It is on you. If you can't if you can't put out your product in a way that is going to grab people's attention, then they're not they're not going to jump into it. I mean, you bring up the cable box. I mean, the Xbox, which is pretty much all it is now. It's like gamers don't care about that crap. Gamers care about games, and it's the same thing with Nintendo. Their press conference completely boring. They had absolutely nothing to offer except Animal Crossing and, oh, look, this is the Wii U with a bunch of fake families pretending to enjoy themselves. On Live comes out, hey, we're going to release a bunch of stuff in multi-view. Okay, crickets. I mean, that's all it really is. It's just they expect fanfare, and they're getting that those two people who are ridiculously excited for a week. All right. Um, I guess we've... Yeah, we might go on to the E3. Yeah, oh wait, Nick uh, Nick was about to say something, I think. Or okay. Uh yes, uh the next topic is the rumors. All the rumors that occurred before E three concerning on live slash Gaikai. Uh we heard that Sony was gonna buy out on live and then they're gonna buy out Gaikai and then maybe uh EA games were gonna come to on live because Origin followed the on live Twitter account. Uh What's everybody say about the rumors about Sony 
partnering or buying out a cloud gaming service and then the announce there was no announcement. Uh, let's start with your Maximus. Uh, well, what's really going to happen here is OnLive is going to buy Gaikai, Gaikai is going to buy OnLive, Sony is going to buy Gaikai, then buy OnLive, and um, Microsoft might jump in at some point. Hmm, interesting. Uh, Jeremy? I just love saying I told you so, and that's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, Nick, what's your opinion? I had all these fantasies of playing Uncharted on my laptop and playing Call of Duty with my dad because I don't want to play it on my PlayStation. And I, You know, I hyped myself up unfairly. I shouldn't have done that. And I got disappointed when nothing happened. And I didn't think uh, on li- Sony would buy on live and, and ruin on live. I thought if it were to happen, it would have been a beneficial thing because it would have given on live. Uh, you know, I actually hoped it would be where they, they would partner up and stay separate, but kind of cross their uh, their content with each other. Imagine having PSN games on your uh, laptop or on your micro console. You know, eh, it's a nice idea, but I guess it was a fantasy. All right, Ryan. Um, I'm gonna have to go along with Jeremy on this. Complete told you so. And, and it's hard to, but here's the thing. First of all, it started out with they were gonna partner together. And this is, this, I don't know if you guys ever remember in elementary school playing a game called Telephone. You would tell somebody next to you something, and by the end, you would hope it would be the same thing. Originally, it was going to be partnering up, and then all of a sudden, it's become a buyout. It's like, you know, right off the bat, when you heard that online was going to be doing this, and somebody from somewhere said, oh, we're, po- we're going to partner up for, with the cloud gaming thing. First of all, that didn't mean this was going to happen right now. No one said it was close to happening until one website decided to say, hey, it's going to be, I think, was it, uh, uh, whatever that super site was. It doesn't even matter. Anyways, they sat there and they said, hey, we're going to partner up, and now we're going to own, and now there's a deal close to be signed. Even if there was a deal close to be signed, did everybody expect this to happen tomorrow? I mean, usually when something is signed, it's normally framework before it's an actual thing. So really when it comes down to it, Everybody who super put all their eggs in this basket completely got played by the media more than anybody else. All right, Stephen. I, I don't really think there's really anything to even say at this point. Um, this, as far as I can tell, at least, this all started from, and I don't remember the site either, one idiot who said, except for the news that Sony is going to buy out a or partner with a cloud, a, you know, a potent cloud gaming corporation. You know, he was wrong. Obviously, he was an idiot. And a million things got crazy because of it. And you know what? The guy's a total jerk. He's an idiot. It's done. Nothing happened. Move on. All right. Um, I'm going to open it up to the chat box on OnLiveFans.com if anybody has anything to say. Um, Also opening the table up to you guys. Any further comments? I'm ready to move on. (laughs) I told you so. All right. Well, we'll move on then. Doesn't look like anybody has much to say in the chat box. Uh, well, actually, let me see. TSR Dropshot said, Jeremy, you jerk. Um, <laughs> Hell yeah. Dorsey Lynn said, if I was Jeremy, I would have said the same thing. I told you so. All right. Um, oh, there you go. Let's see. You don't you had- guys weren't excited about the idea, though. Oh, I was, I was, I was excited. I was hoping... Sony would end up doing something with on live, but it intrigued me. I didn't just I didn't know how how the logistics would work, but it was intriguing. But it's over. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was something else. It uh, Nick said, "What did Nick say?" <laughs> I said, "Don't act like you weren't excited by the idea." Oh, definitely, uh, it would have been cool, but I had I seriously had no expectations. So I was not even the tiniest bit bothered. I was like, "All right, cool." <laughs> I think I think everybody thought it would have been a good idea. It would have been neat to be able to play it on my PlayStation. You know, they have things for everything else. But I mean, like I said, if you put all your eggs in one basket, and would I have still have thought it would have been a waste of money, even if it was on you know Sony on a PlayStation? Yeah. I mean, we want you to focus on your service and your yeah. hardware. All right. Um, shall we move on? 
Uh, let, let's let's check chat box. Uh, Cam five 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 said, "True, it worked. Stayed up till three thirty a.m." Um, uh, Farquad said, "I'm just glad it wasn't bad news." Uh, Transmitting Nivon said about the uh, he's referring to something else. Um, Good boy said free publicity, and it certainly was free publicity. I think uh, both on live and Gaikai kind of milked it in giving no comment on the whole matter. Well, that that's fine. Um, I mean, honestly, right, it's, let's move. What's that? I was gonna say honestly, it's more press than on lives given themselves lately. <laughs> True. Good point. All right. Okay, let's let's move on to um, another topic. We have. I don't think we're gonna get to all these because we're already at an hour and fifteen minutes. But we still have thirty viewers, so I think we'll continue a little bit. Um, things on live could do to keep Playpack subscribers subscribed. Uh, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> What? What was that? What I missed? Uh, uh, what? <laughs> Dude's on it. What? <laughs> what things do you think OnLive could do to keep Playpack subscribers subscribed to the service? Oh, I, you know, whatever. As the fanboy that I am, I, I think it's fine. Just needs more games, as usual. You know, just keep posting the games, and it's the same thing as the AAA. Is need more games. I mean, it's, it's got a thirty percent discount on any new games that come out. You know, I mean, it's it's, it's a pretty freaking cool deal. All right, Jeremy, your opinion? Um, like your Maximus said, I mean, they're already giving, you know, giving away the games that they have practically. So you can't keep doing that. I mean, you can keep doing it, but you're going to eventually run out of games, which you've already done. So obviously more games, obviously more UI updates, more communication, and when you do communicate, just stick with your promises, and we will stick by you. All right, Nick? I think the play pack is pretty much perfect the way it is. Give us, uh, you know, the indie games, the older games, and the old play pass games. But to get more people to join the play pack, they need to have more play pass games. They need to attract more customers. Period. The more people who are playing play pass games, uh, they'll they'll see the play pack. They'll be curious and they'll check it out. And some of them will subscribe. All right, Ryan. Well. Kind of how I'm feeling about about the way to keep people subscribed is, I mean, why don't, instead of just having the 30% discount thing, um, it would be cool, like, if maybe they would have, like, play, pass only, play pack only sales and stuff like that, something to bring them in. Also, uh, the UI has got to be cleaned up. Um, when you go into, when you go into... The, this is even with your normal play pass, uh, play pass games too. When you go into that play pack, that is one big just mess. You want to find a game? If you played it recently, you're gonna find it. But if you want it, someone says, "Oh, you should try," I don't. If you if you you should try Wheelman. Okay, well let's find Wheelman. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Is I missed it. You know, so you gotta go back up. You gotta go back down. You gotta find all these games. They need to figure out some way better than that little search thing they have there to actually find their games. And that's a big thing. Clean up the UI. Also advertise it a little bit more. And I think, you know, they'll be able to keep people on there. Hype it up. I, I like your idea of the uh, play pack only sales. I think that would be, that's something um, the online team should consider. Uh, or, you know what, even better, one thing, um, those games in the play pack that people say they wish they could own, make it so play pack subscribers can buy those games. Yeah, good idea. Those, those wow. are great ideas. Let Stephen let Stephen talk before we open up the table. <laughs> Jermaxus is finally talking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. My biggest thing for the play pack is, in the vein of the more games, is I just, I'm not, anyone who's expecting to see current titles in the play pack, whatever, I think it's retarded, but what I do expect to see, and I think would be really helpful for the play pack, is AAA titles from three years ago, from four years ago, like, like Bioshock, I think Bioshock is a great game for the play pack, and I think Arkham Asylum is a great game for the play pack. 
I want to see more stuff like that. You know, I know I'm getting into deals with developers ground, and that's a whole different bag to deal with. But, you know, for instance, like, I, I'm not subscribed to the play pack right now. I know it was really rumored for a while. If they added Fallout 3 to the play pack, I would join in an instant. You know, and, oh, yeah. and, and Fallout 3 is old. I mean, Fallout 3 is like six years old now. And I feel like it can't be that expensive to try to deal with some of these publishers and get games that have pretty much reached the end of their sales cycle to see if, you know, I mean, why wouldn't they want to see if they get a few more sales off a game that's already four or five years old? But I just want to see more titles that are still known to this day, even though they're older. And, I mean, I do agree with what everyone else said as well, but that's just my point. All right, um, I'm going to, I know Dramaximus has something to say, and I think Nick has something to say. I want to go to the chat box, because a lot of people have been writing on this topic. Um... So let's see here. Transmating trans I can't ever say his name. Transmata Nivon says add good games that people know and fix the hardware support that was removed from the micro console. Hard to play games that require a kilobyte per M per minute, I guess. Um, when you remove support for people people's on the micro console. Um, Thor Suleon said, is on live getting Lego L-O-T-R, add that beach. Uh, let's see here. Just, just, just so you know, JB slash him is keyboard and mouse. <laughs> <laughs> I already got giggling. I know I screwed that up. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, TSR drop shot said, PSN gives us free PS3 games now. Infamous yep. 2 and LBP2. Why not get the good games on OnLive in the play pack? Um, That's what I'm saying. Yes. Cam555 said, would love to know how many subscribe to the play pack. Yeah, that would be interesting to know. Um, Alright, uh, what do you guys have to say? Dermaximus, you have something you say? Uh, well, as far as like the ideas, uh, I actually did think when um, when um, Ryan was talking about it, the the search functions and stuff. Uh, it would be cool if they uh, if they were to add any any more benefit besides the thirty percent off a uh, free rental uh, per month for you know while they're subscribed or two free rentals, you know whatever. That'd be pretty cool. And as far as the uh, the search function, uh, somebody recommending a game, like it, it would be nice to have like one key bind. To go to the search function instead of having to go way back to the top to you know type in the search because the search function is good it works it's just you have to go way back up the list you know. No, I agree with that completely. Yep. Um, I want to say something about what TSR Dropshot was saying. I agree with him completely. Right now, I can go onto my PlayStation and download Infamous 2, Little Big Planet 2, all these other AAA titles that came out within the past two years, and it's like can't say I got the same with the Play Pack. I could try right. PlayStation Plus. Now that's that's not entirely fair though, and I will say this on life's defense. Both of those games, I mean, I obviously Infamous, you know, third party, but I mean I think Little Big Planet was pretty close to first party for Sony. I mean those are those are franchises that Sony has near complete control over. For the sake of online, online has no franchises it has complete control over. And they well, have complete control over having franchises or not. Maybe they should look into that. Well, I agree with that. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, okay, let's not even talk about Little Big Planet, um, Infamous, uh, Just Cause. There, there's a lot of games that they that they don't that just this month they're gonna give away. They're gonna give away Virtua Fighter Five as well. I mean, there. This thing is, you can work out a deal with your subscribers. Give them something. Give them a reason, even if that means you take that triple away triple A title away when they stop uh, subscribing. It's like. Let them play. Okay, say say because it's coming up, uh, uh, Dark Siders two. So that's going to be coming out. Well, why don't you make that like a free game they can play for a couple months because they're subscribed, or something like that. And then if they stop subscribing, well then they can't play that game anymore until they buy or resubscribe. All right. Um, Robert Durbin had uh, he said maybe they should do a random free game like PSN Plus does, kind of along the same lines. And uh, Thank you very much. Thorsulan agreed with that. Um, anybody else have comments? How about Nick? Do you have anything to say? I think sorting the play pack is a good idea. When you click into the play pack, you should see RPGs, action, sports. You should see that uh, those categories when you click it. 
Um, also, uh, about buying Playpack games, I don't see any reason why they should offer Playpack games for sale. I think that the Playpack is probably give you any reason to unsubscribe. If you were able to buy your Playpack games, you might subscribe for a month, buy all the games you want, and then un unsubscribe. That's not what they want to do. Well, I'm not, I'm not saying put all the games on sale. Put a select few. Well, there are a few for sale. They love those games so much, they subscribe to Playpack, and they can play them. That's the point. If they had a constant, you know, if there were some consistency when it comes to releases, then they wouldn't have that problem, and they wouldn't be afraid to have them coming out for a Play Pass from Playpack. So you got to think of it that way, too. Well, I, I, I would, I'll input here and say my only worry with what Ryan said initially about, you know, like Darksiders 2, I don't think that's a good idea, only because... I am totally somebody who would subscribe to the Playpack for a month, play the crap out of Darksiders 2 for $10, and then call it a day. So it's, you know, it's different if it's a multiplayer game that has a ton of replay value. But I mean, as I've gotten older and I have a ton more games to play, I'm much more you know, common to just play a game through once, love it, be done, move on. And I think they would end up losing money by allowing something like that because then I could play Darksiders 2 for 10 bucks instead of Darksiders 2 for 40 bucks or 50 bucks. Right. But at the same time, that's just like getting it from Gamefly or anything else, too. I agree, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's really, it really comes down to the consumer and how online wants to work with them. But, I mean, I see what you're saying, too. But, I mean, at the same time, you know, comes back to the Gamefly thing and things like that. There's options right. out there to do the same thing. Why not take advantage? I see that. Um, and with the uh, comparing it to PlayStation Plus, uh, it is it's kind of the same as comparing it to Steam though. You know they don't have enough games. You, you want on right to give more free games. You know, how many deals have they done? You know, so I'm saying when it's bigger, it would make more sense for them to just throw in a free game here and there. You know, not not right now. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's still pretty light. A uh, Farquad suggested that longtime subscribers get a discount on monthly on the monthly fee if they have been subscribers for a few months. Anybody? That actually, he is kind of correct on that, and there's actually a way I would think about doing it. If you look at the way Xbox Live is set up, or you look at the way that uh, PSN is set up, maybe they, they should, instead of doing this monthly thing, give you some tiered options. Yeah, you should be able to subscribe for a year for like uh, 80 bucks or something. Yeah, because like if you look at, you know, PSN is pretty much the easiest one for me. If you want to do three months, then you buy it for, I think it's like seventeen ninety nine. If you want to do a year, you do it for, you buy it for, uh, for, for 50 bucks. Or like Xbox, you charge once a month how they're doing. So it could be like nine bucks, but then give you a, give you a break and say if you buy two months, you get three months, which would add up to, you know, 18, 18 or 20 bucks if you want. And then say now for an entire year, just like any subscription service, you do it for 50 bucks. Do it for something. You got to make it affordable and realistic, well, but there's there's ways that on live could actually make make money because people honestly sometimes they don't want to have to worry about reoccurring payment every month. I agree. Well, in the end, if you do the um if they have a yearly plan, maybe a 6-month plan, they're going to end up making more money because half those people might end up wanting you cancel if they're paying by the month. So by giving a discount, you're actually probably making more money. No, oh, definitely. I mean, you're 100% on. And I mean, there's some people who, you know, they they get the play pack, they get the play pack, and then they forget to unsubscribe. Well, then they just start getting frustrated by for you know they forget. Of course, that's on them. But then they're like, well, I'm not using it or whatever. And then they forget, and they have to keep doing it every month. It's just like, boom, drop a card, bam. I plan on playing for three months, six months, a year. Boom, you're done. Cam five 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 wants to know how many of us are sub play pack subscribers. Dramaximus, are you? Jeremy? I am, but I'm going to cancel it soon. Nick, you're? Uninterrupted since it started. Nice. Brian? I've gone quite a long time, but I have gone on and off. Right now I'm on, but will probably go off. Steve? Steve? I was on for probably eight months, but I went off, and I haven't seen enough of a... I usually, actually, I really wanted to play back for the 30% discount. That is an amazing discount. But to me, there hasn't been anything worth spending the 30% discount on for the most part. So I've been off for like three months now. Um, TSR Dropshot said, talk about PayPal. I'm assuming he means being able to pay for games with PayPal. Uh, that wouldn't be a bad idea because some people don't have 
don't don't use credit cards or they you know don't want to go out and get the prepaid stuff and just hook it directly to I mean I know people would do that but honestly for how jacked up PayPal is and and submitting their payments that could lead to a whole bunch of trouble no well, forget about PayPal because remember we're on live we're not going to make it more convenient for the people who have less money or bad credit we're gonna put our app in two thousand dollar televisions that's what we're gonna do and, okay, there, Jeremy actually there makes is, a good point. There is because, a point to be had. No, yeah, because I honestly, like, and I've said this before, the breaking point, right now to me, on live is the bargain basement. Like, Goop Boys actually said that too. Like, all I ever play on live is when I can get a game for three bucks or I can get a game for ten bucks that I didn't want to bother spending full price on on, on my Xbox. If I really want a game and I really want to know it's going to be perfect, I still buy it on my 360. But right. so I mean until on live and it's it's funny to see you mention that because on live is everything's cheap, everything's easy, but Jeremy's right. You know, they're not making it easy to bring in the pe right now, what is on who is on live the best for? It's the people who can't afford a three sixty, it's people who can't afford a PS three or a high end rig, who are into getting a game for twenty bucks on on a ancient netbook from two from five years ago. You know, but you're right, there's a lot of things that don't reflect that kind of idea. Hey, if I can go into Home Depot and use PayPal, I should be able to use PayPal and on live. That's no, just that's, me. It's cool, and, and I'm not disagreeing. PayPal would be awesome. I'm, it just makes me laugh because I mean, everybody here is supposed to be 18 years old playing on live, right? And I mean, I'm a little weirded out that most people above 18 don't have a bank account with the card. You know, it's just, it's a little like what? Welcome to America, my friend. <laughs> you don't uh, have. You don't have to, I mean, you don't have to, it's just, it's not saying you're not over 18 to have your account, just some people like to pay their bills that come directly out of their bank account. Um, uh, Ed, Ed, if I can intervene here just for a second. Go ahead. Uh, I actually have to, to bow out at this hour and a half point. Okay. It has, been, it has been amazing fun, everyone. Thank you very much for listening to my opinion. It's been fun hearing everyone Jeez. else's. Good now, I can only, now I can only agree with one person. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see y'all guys around. Later. 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 Um, I just want to mention TSR Dropshot said you should release on live cards like the PSN card. Perfect. Steam why? just started doing it, so why shouldn't on live? But why? What's the point? What do those cards do? Do it's it's just it's you can give it as a gift to somebody. You uh, people who don't want to hook their credit cards up to their accounts. It's a perfect idea. I honestly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, what he's talking about. I thought they meant the like the gamer cards that Microsoft was doing for a while. No, this is this is actually a, he speaks really good because Steam yeah, just like, started doing this, and I'll tell you right now, I love the fact I can walk into unfortunately a GameStop for this, pop down some money on a card, go out, put it in there. I don't even have to have my credit card, which has actually been stolen over Steam twice. I agree. Cards would be awesome. All right. Um, I'm gonna. We're gonna start. The show's not gonna end quite yet, but I have. I'm gonna have a couple little questions that should probably be pretty short. Um, not, we're not gonna cover everything in the uh, thread that I made earlier today because we're at the hour and a half mark and it's getting a little long. It's getting um, longer than on our than our um, online fans cast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go through and ask each one of you a question, and that question is. Oh. One your favorite game on on live service, and a game that you'd most like to see come to on live, Ger Maximus. Well, uh, I can't pick a favorite really. Like I mean, I have so many favorites. I I could go through a list of favorites. So uh, my most uh, my most memorable. Well, one of my most memorable is uh, Advent Rising though. Like I was pretty impressed by that game. It's a pretty cool game. Uh, what what to come. Everything, man. I want everything to come. <laughs> yeah, I, I want it all. All right, Jeremy. Um, my favorite as of right now would have to be uh, Just Cause Two because I like the open world environment, and it's it's funny that that's like one of the games that's been on the service the longest, and it's probably my favorite. Um, what I would like to see would be, I mean, I'm not. Picky. I mean, I guess if I could choose one game, it would be Lollipop Chainsaw, because I'm just completely, I don't know, I want to, just go Negri, I'm done. <laughs> Bias. Alright, Nick. <laughs> if 
favorite game? Mm, there are a lot of good games that I like, but probably Saints Row the Third, and maybe uh, Deus Ex: Human Revolution. And I'm not even a shooter fan, but that game was really good. Uh, games that I want to see come to OnLive, probably my favorite game of the generation, Fallout 3. All right, Ryan. <clears throat> I'm, you know, it's not too tough. I would probably actually have to agree with Just Cause. Uh, it was the first game I got on OnLive uh, back way, way back when. And I'll tell you, I still love to play that game, even with its imperfections and when you're on a motorcycle, it's all hell hard to control, um, but I love the game because it's open and because it seems to really be the only super open world game. Next would have to be Saints Row behind that. Um, games that I would like to see, yes, I would actually really like to see Fallout 3. It's not super demanding, so they could do it if they wanted to. Um, well, you know, of course you'd have to pop on with Bethesda and get them to, and them and everyone else. Um, I think that would probably be a big one. Or a really good realistic racer. I wouldn't, I mean, provided it all worked out and latency was little to none, um, I wouldn't mind having a kind of Forza Gran Turismo style game. And there are PC games that can do that. So, or even Microsoft Flight would be good. The X, not that crappy one that they just released, the free to play. All right. Um. Anybody have anything to say? Woo. About. About whatever you want. No, not whatever you want. <laughs> don't get don't get us started. <laughs> yeah, right, you, have, um. you have two guys who run podcasts that can definitely <laughs> go off the uh, go off the rails of it. <laughs> All right. Um. I'm gonna open up the chat box for any, for them to ask us any questions. They want to get our opinions on anything. Um, oh no! Actually, I do have one thing I will say. Go for it. Now, most of the people who know me or have listened to the online fans cast or the time that the couple times that I sat in on uh, the breaking point, they know that I'm super critical on online. Like I am probably the most outspoken person on the site and on the podcast. This is not to say I have a problem with online. This is not to say I hate the service or don't, but. I just want to see him get better. That's the reason why we all do these podcasts and video things and we sit on the site. I mean, even even Mr. Jeremy over there, who is just about as uh, critical as I am, we wouldn't be doing this if we didn't like it, uh, if we didn't care about on live. I mean, I've been a part of this community since Ed started it. What are we looking, almost four, three, four? Uh, yeah, it's... it's it's over three. It's like three and a half. Yeah, because I remember I joined up on... I think it was March. March, March of 2009, I think. Yeah, I joined up on April Fool's Day of that. And I'll tell you right now, I mean, I might be I might be critical, but I love on live. And this is the same thing with our community um, that, run, that are on on live fans. Uh, I actually love interacting with them on a day-to-day -day basis. Um and this thing that, you know, Ed has pretty much created and has gotten the right people to help him do it. You know, you look some have come and gone, you look you look at our staff list, it goes up and down. Um but we all do this because we like it and because we like all of you guys. So Yeah, I'm gonna give a shout out to Air Master. What up, homie? <laughs> <laughs> Very well said, Ryan. Um anybody have anything else you say? Before he closes out. Yeah. Um, well, um, just on what was Ryan, Ryan was saying, it's uh, I'm not just going down on you guys for like being haters and stuff. Uh, no, it's it's not. You know, I mean, constructive <laughs> criticism is all good, of course. You know, when you guys make some intelligent posts, yeah, right on. Uh, when I get mad is when I see the same people posting the same crap all day every day. You know, that's just ridiculous. It's like, oh, oh, you're you're just as guilty. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> don't try to act like you ain't. Don't throw stones in your glass house, friend. <laughs> All right, Nick. Did you, Nick, you're go for your about to say yeah. something. Um, I just want to say that there are a lot of things you can criticize on live about, but when you're playing a game on on live and you're sitting back and you're enjoying the game, every bad thing you can think about just goes away. You're focused on the game, and it's no different from playing on Xbox or PC. It's just 
the game you love to play, and that's all you need. Very well said. No, I'll agree with some on that. I'll agree, yeah, but I could do the same thing on my PlayStation. <laughs> all right. No, I mean, honestly, he's right. We, you know, we say what we say because we criticize the service because we love it, but we do have to agree the service and the tech is amazing. It's great for what they're doing, and you're right. You don't think about any of that stuff. All you care about is that it's working, and you're playing the game. So. All right. Um, there's a question by Fawquad. Uh We all know what that really means. <laughs> <laughs> um, he wants to know when the next online fans cast is. Ryan, any idea? Um, yeah, we. I, I know we've been away for a bit. Um, for those who haven't really known, um, you know, Chris just had a baby. Um, him and his childbearing hips had a baby. Um, so we've we've kind of been out. We've been letting them work, uh, letting them d- go through with that. But we are actually going to be coming back. We're looking at having one at the end of E3. Um, we're still, we're going to be recording on Saturday, and we're going to try to keep this going um, as long as we can. Part of the reason why we slowed down a bit was on live slowed down. Um, so we kind of, you know, we we started working on on our podcast as well. And we've just been kind of waiting for things to pick up. And now that things are starting to work out, there's some things to talk about on a live. E3 is a big thing. Um, you guys can look forward to us actually coming back. We are going to be back. We're going to be... Um, our, our section is going to be lively again. Um, now that our, our lives have settled out and everything's going to be looking good. So now we can join the ranks of the Breaking Point again. Awesome news. Speaking of the Breaking Point, when's the next one coming out? Oh, God. Um, we're recording our next episode, I believe, tomorrow. However, we do have another episode that was recorded this past weekend with Studio Evil, which actually needs to be put up, but that's something that we need to discuss off the air. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and the also, another question I was asked is when we're going to do another roundtable. You, would you guys be up for doing another one? Yeah, I mean, Ooh. as long as... As long as we've got the topics to talk about and stuff like that, I would have no problem joining in again. I'll be up all night doing this, whenever. Nick, what were you about to say? Oh, I said absolutely yes. All right, your match, Miss, are you up yet for it? I, I love it, man. I, I, I love being the only real fan. I don't mean fan of online. <laughs> oh. I mean normal person, not like a podcaster, you know, the admin and all that stuff, but be a part of it. It's pretty cool. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on now. No, no, no. no that no, was no, a crotch no. shot. Yeah, dude. I mean, kick me right in the nuts. First of all, if we weren't fans, we wouldn't even do those no, podcasts. No, 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 no. That's what I was saying. Not, not fans of the service, man. Just a normal fan say. of the... <laughs> I was going to say, because if you were saying, we, oh, no, then we were going to fight, dude. No, I, I was trying to clarify before you jumped in, man. I'm, like, Hold me I'm back. A normal member, okay? Normal member. <laughs> no, I know what you're saying. And, I, and honestly, I mean, Ed, I would say that when it comes to our future ones, you know, have some staff, but try to get a bunch of the actual members involved, like, more. Like, have it rotate, because we'd like to hear the difference. Yeah. I mean, as a, as a podcaster, I'll tell you right now, it's nice to hear feedback about the service, not just in type. So it, yeah, it, it would be nice. The, the issue we have with rotation is I have to put everybody in a circle and invite just them. But otherwise, if it's public, anybody can join. It could be some guy from China that doesn't even speak English and has no <laughs> idea what OnLive is. Let him in. <laughs> let, let him in. He'll, he'll so tell us about it. We'll, we'll work something out. Mm-hmm. Uh, this time I wanted a lot of staff since it was the first one. and uh, yeah, It worked out. Yeah, it would work out better. Um, also, we might change the times of, of um, future ones up so some of the guys from the UK can be here because it's like 4 a.m. or no, it's like 3 a.m. there right now. And I know AD Carter wanted to be here, but he couldn't. Um, I might put a poll up and see what times people prefer and go with that. I mean, I'd like to change the times up so because I know most of you can't be here until after 5. And... 4.30 for me was bad. <laughs> yeah, so what a change of times up. Um, might be a different host. Maybe uh, Ryan or maybe Chris or maybe Jeremy. Maybe even Nick or Drew Maximus would want to be a host, even though you guys are a little, a little more on the quiet side. Um, I, I think we'll definitely have more uh, roundtable discussions. 
maybe we'll have some people from on live on the show eventually. Oh, it might get a little. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again, and um, for those watching, uh, please post your comments in the on live roundtable thread in the on live platform discussion. Uh, we'll love to hear about them. Um, this should also be up on YouTube uh, at some point if you want to watch it again. <laughs> hey, Vern. Hey, Vern. All right. <laughs> see, you. see you, everyone. We're out. Later.